the Lord. Psalms 5, look at verse number 11. Psalms 5, verse 11 says, But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will thou compass him as with a shield. We're talking from the subject matter of favor, amen? Favor, amen. The favor of God. And we said that favor is the continual tangible presence that enables us to supernaturally overcome obstacles. I don't care what you're going through, God has favored us, amen, praise the Lord. We are the righteous of God because we have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior at salvation. And so as we walk through this series of lessons, we begin to find out that favor causes, will cause us to prosper. We found out in the life of Joseph on last week that favor caused him to prosper, even in difficult situations. Even as a slave, the Bible says, that God caused him to prosper. And everybody took notice of what God was doing on his life. Amen. From, from Pharaoh to Potiphar and Potiphar's wife, all of them seen the favor on his life. Amen. So we could see that when God favors us, others will be able to notice it. Amen. Not only that. But it will also attract wanted and unwanted advances. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you got favor on your life. Amen. Now, we also said that, that uh, favor, doesn't ma it doesn't matter what your age is. When God favors you, June, you're highly favored. Praise the Lord. And so we, we want to deal with this favor thing. Praise God. Amen. Now, tonight I really want to get to uh, some practical steps on how you could be favored, amen, how to, how to live in this favor. Go to, uh, go to uh, Luke chapter 2. How do we increase the favor, amen, and can it be increased? Well, as I, as I looked in the word of God, I see that Jesus increased in favor. So if Jesus can increase in favor, then certainly we can increase in favor. But I believe that there are some practical things that we can do as we walk out this Christian life that we could do to increase our favor, amen? Luke chapter 2, look at verse number 52. Luke chapter 2, verse number 52. Look what it says. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So I begin to look at that, Dennis, and say, well, okay, well, if Jesus could increase in favor, then since we are in him, then what can we do to increase in favor? Amen? Because God wants to favor us. Amen? Now, I believe that one of the first things that we could do to increase in favor, go to Hosea. Hey, God. Hey, God. Chapter 1. Hey, God. Chapter 1. Is to consider our ways. I, I have been seeing of late uh, people who, call, who are called by his name, Sister Pew, just living any kind of way. And they expect for God to favor them even though their lifestyle is not lining up with the word of God. And God, is, look, you got to consider your ways. If you want the favor of God on your life, you got to look at your ways, man. And you got to compare them with the word of God. Now, if your lifestyle is not lining up with the word, then you got to change. Amen. And so change, God expects for us to change. He said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But I got to look at myself. I got to consider my ways. Hey, God, chapter one. Look at verse number five. Hey, God, chapter number one. Praise the Lord. Verse number five. Hallelujah. Look what it says. Now, therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat. But you are not, you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that gather, get, he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Amen. Now, there, we have a way of doing things. But I submit to you tonight that if your ways are not lining up with God's ways, you need to consider those ways. Amen. And I believe that if you want the favor of God on your life, you got to look at yourself, amen. You got to do a self-examination. You know, it's quite easy for us to point the finger at others and say, well, look at what he's doing. Look at what she's doing. It's so easy to do that. 
to, to be judge, jury, and executioner. Praise the Lord. But when it comes down to having favor on your life, you got to do it in examination on you. Amen, amen. Go to Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. It could be that as I am examining my own life, Brother Robinson, that I need to check out who is my friends. Praise the Lord. Because I can learn behavior based upon hanging around different people. Amen. And, and see, what, what you must understand is they will influence you. Amen. If you, if you don't check your ways. Amen. Proverbs 22. Look at verse number 24. Proverbs 22, verse number 24. You ready? Look what it says. Make no friendships with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. So if I can learn the behavior of an angry man, I can also learn the behavior of a fornicator, of an adulterer, amen, of an abuser. So I need to evaluate my friendships, amen, if I want the favor of God on my life. And, 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 and many people find it so difficult to really cut some folk off that need to be cut off. Amen. You are the light, the Bible says, of the world. Why is it that you're hanging with darkness? Amen. And if we want the favor of God in our lives, we got to check out these friendships that we have. Amen. And I believe that's, that's, that could be why some people are not experiencing the fullness of God. Because of the people they're with. Yeah. I mean... I mean, you hanging with those who are worldly, don't have the Lord in their lives, and you want God to shower you with favor. And now you have learned their behavior. You have, you have learned how to roll a joint just like them. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. Well. Hmm. Well. Hallelujah. Amen. And God says, consider your ways. Consider your ways. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm talking about having the favor of God, Les. And I'm talking about doing an inspection on us. Amen. So that we can find out if there's anything in us that's not like him. Or if there's anybody around us. Amen. That's not like him. And those people might need to be cut off. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now, I believe that the only way you're going to change your behavior is by getting in the word of God. I was talking to, I was talking to someone just the other day, and I was trying to, to explain to them that the more of the word that I get in me and the more of the word of God begins to purify my soul. Amen. And that's why people don't like coming to churches to hear the word of God, because once I hear the word of God, I'm responsible for making the change in my life. Amen. Once, once I see it for myself and God holds me accountable for my action. But many people just, just make me feel good, Pastor. Don't teach me the word of God. Don't teach me how to change. Amen. Now, many people only look at, look, they only want to change the big three. The adultery, the fornication, and the drinking and stuff like that. But they don't want to change the anger and the bitterness that's in their heart. The jealousy and the envy that's in their heart. And God says we got to consider those things. But if, if I don't have the word of God on it, if I don't see it for myself, I can't make the, the necessary change in my life. Go to Psalms, Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Amen. And that is why we endeavor to, to share with you the word of God with simplicity so that you can be without excuse. That you won't be able to say, well, I didn't know that. No, we, you didn't talk, we didn't talk about this. We didn't show you the word of God on it. And once you get the word of God on, you, on it, then you're responsible for that, that word that you have. Amen. Psalms 119, verse number 9. Look what it says. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? 
That's the question. How can I cleanse my way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Now, look, look, look up for a second. It's more than just hearing the word of God. Yeah, we're supposed to hear the word of God. But it's more important that once you hear the word of God, that you do it. Amen. 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 <laughs> you know, if you don't apply what you've heard, it does you no good. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. I heard that, Pastor, but what did you do with it? Amen. If you want favor, it's about the doing of the word. Amen. Not just the hearing. See, the Bible says, yeah, you, you forget what man of man you are because you, you just hear it and not do it. And the Bible says you go and look into the mirror of God's word and you forget what man of man you were. Matthew chapter number 7. Look at verse number 24. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Look what it says. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sins of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. And every one that heareth these sands of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. The rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So both people heard the word of God, but calamity faced both of them. But the one that heard it and did something with it, was able to stand. It's only when I just come to church just to hear the word of God and say, oh, pastor, you preached a good lesson. But you don't do nothing with it when calamity faces you. Devastation comes to your house. Then you're not able to stand because you didn't apply it to your life. And Sister Gwen and I, we, we were talking the other day. We said, look, all we want to do is be relevant to you. Teach you the word that is relevant to you. So that you can leave this place and go do what God just said. Amen. Amen. We just, if, if, if we just show up and don't do what God says, we are just no, no better than a sorority or fraternity. Think about it for a second. They're a social club. The church is not a social club. It's the place where we get God's word so we can examine our own lives and see whether or not we're doing what God told us to do. And then I tell you, I tell you, when you start doing what God told you, favor, favor is going to come. Ah, uh, Pastor, I, you know, I don't want to look into my life because, because if, I, if I see some things that I need to change, you know, I, I don't want to change. I like what I'm doing. I, I, was, <laughs> I was telling this person again, I say, listen, I believe since Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us, Angie, that Holy Spirit will reveal to us the areas that we need to change. He will begin to point out, okay, your little, your little sassy attitude needs to change. Amen. And, and so, so he'll begin to show us how to humble, our, humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that he might exalt us in due time. And so I got I to gotta do something with the word that I got that the Holy Spirit just gave me, that now I got to humble myself. But no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I'm just happy where I'm at. I'm, 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 I'm good. Well, no, you're not good. Because the Holy Spirit already revealed this area that, that needs to be changed. And so it is that, that if we want the favor of God, we got to change our ways and consider our ways. Amen. Your, your, your course of action, your methods. Your manners, your conduct, your behavior. Amen. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You just can't do what you want to do as a believer. Amen. No, no, you can't. You under new management, right? Didn't you say, didn't you say that you wanted Jesus as Lord and Savior? Lord means that he gets to direct your path. Savior means he gets to save you from your sins and the punishment of them. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You just can't do what you want to do. Look at verse number 19. 
1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So I just can't do what I want to do. I, I, I've been bought with a price. And the Bible says that, that since I understand that I've been bought with a price, I got to glorify God in my body. Mm, mm, mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I got to consider my ways. Amen. <laughs> Go to Psalms 119. Go back there. Psalms 119. How do I get the favor of God? Evaluate my life. Check myself out. Consider my ways. Yeah, I got to consider my ways. Praise the Lord. Amen. Psalms 119, look at verse number 11. Psalms 119, look at verse number 11. You ready? Look what he says. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So when, 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 when I'm evaluating myself and getting this word in my heart, the whole purpose is, God, look, I don't want to sin against you. I don't want to displease you. Man, boy, that's my, that's my desire. That is my, that, that is my ultimate desire, God. I don't want to do anything that's going to displease you. Amen? So I get this word in my heart so I won't have to sin against God. Because if I know better, you do what? You do better. It's only when you don't know. And that's why sometimes I have a challenge with the hooping and the hollering in church. Because, see, as long as you're hooping and hollering at me, my emotions are stirred up. I'm not getting no word. And so if I'm not getting no word, I can't be held accountable. And so now I, I shouted in church. I jumped in church. I ran in church. But then I left out and I lived like the devil. Because there's no word. There's no word. Amen. Amen. Huh. Go to, go to uh, Psalms 27. Psalms 27. The next thing I want to submit to you, how you can have the favor of God on your life continually, is to seek his face and not his stuff. Amen. Now, I believe that God wants us to have some stuff. Amen. I, I, I really believe that, that God wants us to have a whole bunch of stuff. Amen. But I don't think that God wants us to have the stuff without him. Amen. Amen. He wants us to have him. And if we have him, we have his stuff. But I got to seek the face of God. If I want the favor of God, I got to seek his face. Psalms 27, look at verse number 8. Psalms 27, verse number 8. Watch this. Psalms 27, verse number 8. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. I got to seek out this face, man. I, I tell you, I, you got to be like Moses. Don't be satisfied with the burning bush. Amen. You got to want to know him better. Ooh, praise the Lord. Have, 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 you, have you gotten to a place in your, your spiritual walk where you said, God, I just want to know you more perfectly? That's, God, I just want to know you more perfectly. I want to know everything about you. Okay, 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 okay. Let me just bring it to the natural situation. You know how when you date folk, you know, how you wanted to get to know them? What did you do? You spent time with them. As much time as you could, you spent with the person that you wanted to know better. Now, how much more important it is to know God better than it is to know a date better? Hey, Amen. Because if I know God better, who knows the, my date, he might explain to me he's not the one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I got to seek his face. Go to 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, chapter number 7. 2 Chronicles, chapter number 7. If I want the favor of God on my life, the continual blessings of God, the tangible presence of God on my life, I got to seek his face. 
Look at verse 14, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God says, but I, look, there, there's several things I got to do. I got to humble myself. I got to pray. I got to seek his face. And I got to turn from my way of doing things. Amen. Amen. Then God say, I'll, you, I'll heal from heaven. I'll forgive their sins. And I'll heal their land. But I got to seek his face. Seek his face. Amen. <laughs> seek his face. All right. Amen. Now, now watch this now. Ooh, praise the Lord. I can't be satisfied with just having church. See, many people just satisfied with Sundays and Wednesdays, you know, every now and then a special occasion. But you can't be satisfied with that. I mean, you got to have a hunger and a thirst after, after God. Man. I mean, you got I mean, you got to be so hung, hungry for God. And if you are hungry for God, he says, he going to fill you. Go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. <laughs> Amen. You ever crave a specific food? Anybody ever crave something? Well, you had to have it. And you would go to any length until you got it. Because it never satisfied your taste. I mean, uh, if you wanted a particular food, you had to have that food. Amen. And I've been told when women are, are pregnant that there are some cravings that come over. And they'll make their husbands go find the thing. Don't come back with a different brand. You come back with, I said, Bluebell, don't bring me a, a form, or whatever that form thing is. Don't bring me Oak Form. I want Bluebell. Amen. And so you would go to the ends of the earth to satisfy that craving. But what about God? What about the presence of God? That God, I, I'm not satisfied until I get you. I'm a God chaser. Matthew chapter 5. Look at verse number 6. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they what? God promises us that if we will seek after him, hunger and thirst after his righteousness, the Bible says, I'm not going to have just a, a, a bit of taste of him, but I'm going to be completely filled. Amen. Could it be that some people just don't want to be filled? Because the more of God I have, the more of God has of me. Amen. Woo. That's it. That's it. That's it, Sister Pew. That, that I'm afraid, Pastor. I'm afraid to yield my life to God because I don't know what God wants me to do. He might tell me to go over here or go over there. And I, I don't know if I'm ready for that. So therefore, I'm not going to yield. That's why I don't want to seek his face. Because the moment I seek his face, I get instructions for my life. Amen. But I'm telling you, if you want the favor of God, you got to seek his face. Amen. And not his stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Go to Isaiah chapter 6. Now, here, here's another reason why I, I believe that people uh, are apprehensive to seek in the face of God. Because once I get into the presence of God, Sister Mary Jane, God begins to reveal who I am. Amen. I mean, have you, have you, ever, have you ever been seeking God's face and then all of a sudden God began to show you you? Amen. And, and what condition you were in? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Amen. This, and then it goes back to you considering your ways. Because now you've been exposed. 
for the real you. Amen. You dressed up the outside, but on the inside you were like dead man's bones. And so, so, so I don't want to get into the presence of God because now he's going to expose me. Whoo, praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 6. Look at verse number 1, Isaiah chapter 6. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 6, verse number 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Amen. So when I see God for who he is, he, he shows me who I am. And that could be why I don't want to seek his face. Because now I, I see I'm, I'm undone. Amen. I got all the right clothes on, but on the inside, what's going on? You know, and, 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 and people have mastered fronting in church. They mastered it. They've mastered covering up the sin. Well, it looks like nobody else knows. But when I get into God's presence, amen, where are you going to go to hide from God? How can you, how many clothes can you put on where God won't see you? The inner man, the heart of man. And it could be, that's why you, people don't have the favor. Because they're not seeking the face because they don't want to be exposed for who they are. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Woo, praise the Lord. Pastor, I didn't know that, I didn't know that much about favor. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Who praise the Lord. Mm. I found this out. The more intimate our relationship is with God, the more of his favor comes on our lives. I mean, the more, the more, the more of his presence I have, I'm in, the more of the favor I have. That's why the intimacy that God is looking for, that's why God designed man. You think God just created you just, just to create something? No, he created us to have fellowship with him because he wanted to have this Love relationship. Amen. And that's why he sent his son. He loved us so much, Sister Gladys, that he said, I'm going to send my son so I can have a relationship with them. They messed up from the beginning. But I, I have a redemptive plan to get them back to me. And if they would just want this relationship, I've done everything already for them. But now my children are running from me. Okay, okay, in the natural, in the natural. Well, well let, me just, let, me just, let me just bring it back to the very beginning. When, when God created Adam, they had such an intimate relationship with each other. They were talking every day in the cool of the day, the Bible said. And then when Adam messed up, Adam tried to cover himself. Amen. And God says, Adam, where you get them clothes from? Where you get that from? You try to cover yourself. He said, God, I was trying to hide. I was trying to hide from you. Because I didn't want you to see what man of man I, be, I have become. Hallelujah. You can put on as much makeup as you want. You can wear the longest skirt you want. Get the best three-piece suit you want. But God still will expose you. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you how to get favor. Amen. I'm trying to tell you how to have this continual blessing of God on your life. And it's not just showing up to church. Amen. The Bible says the devil's no, 
know and believe that Jesus is Lord, but they, they ain't accepting him. The devils know him. You remember when, when they had all them devils in the swine? He said, Jesus, what have we to do with thee? They knew who Jesus was. But just because they knew who he was, they didn't submit to him. Oh, man. Favor. Amen. Favor. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11. If I want the favor of God, I got to consider my ways, and I got to seek the face of God. Amen. I got to seek his face. The Bible says, seek him now while he can be found. <laughs> Call upon him while he's near. I got to do it now. I can't wait. You know, some people, some people will say, well, I'll wait until the, the latter years of my life. Well, who, who promised you that you're going to make it? Hey, man, the way things are happening right now, I, I, was watching, I was watching the news before I came here. Did you see them two ladies? They shooting at each other for crawfish. Yeah. yeah. 170 and 123. Now, they could have lost their lives. For a crawfish. I'm telling you, you better seek the face of God. You better see, I'm telling you, I better seek the face of God. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy. <laughs> well, I told y'all to go chapter 11. Look at verse number 26. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26. Behold, I set before you this day, blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye, ye have not known. So the next thing I want to submit to you, that if you're going to have favor, you got to obey. So, somebody say obey. So God says, I'm setting before you a blessing and a curse. He said, the blessing will come as a result of you obeying what I said. A curse will come as a result of not obeying what I said. Now, 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 listen to me now. When I talk about obeying what God said, I'm also talking about when Holy Spirit speaks to you. You know that, that, that soft voice that comes and says, I want you to do thus and so? And you try to shake him off as if you didn't want to hear what he had to say? That's still disobeying God. <laughs> he said, I've said before you life and death, blessing and curses. And many people don't want to obey God because it might inconvenience them. Amen. It might inconvenience them because God, I, I'm on a set schedule. Now, if, 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 you, if I got to go do what you said, I'm going to get out of my comfort zone. I'm comfortable where I'm at. I'm comfortable sitting in the pews. And God said, no, there's more that I want from you. And some people are just sitting there just disobeying God and, and, and can't figure out why the favor ain't happening for them. I'm telling you right now, it's because you're not obeying. You're just not obeying. You want to do your own thing. And God says, no, you got to obey. <laughs> and here's the thing, Jude. God is not cursing you. People make a decision to disobey God, and the consequences of their disobedience is the curse. That's what happened with, with tithes and offering. God ain't cursing nobody. God said, look, give your tithes and your offering, and you won't live under the curse. Well, now, if you're under the curse, it's because you made a decision not to obey what God said. Oh, I think it's so simple. We make it just so difficult. The easiest thing for you to do to have a successful life it's just obey God. 
No, no, seriously, seriously. Since he is in authority and control of you, all you got to do, Diana, is just do what he said. And guess what? It's on him. I told, I told God when we started this church, I said, this is your church. All I'm going to do is do what you tell me to do. Now, if it don't work, it's your fault. Because I'm going to obey you. I'm gonna, look, if you tell me to go walk off the cliff, I'm going to walk off the cliff. I figure you're going to protect me. You told me to do it, right? Now, here's the thing. You got to make sure that that's his voice. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Before you start walking, amen. He said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. But I told God, I, I, look, I, I have made myself of no reputation. None. And my, the easiest thing for me to do is, when I hear God speak, just do it. It doesn't matter whether people like it or not. I heard God speak. <laughs> I remember that time. I remember one time, uh, this was several years ago. Uh, I, it was the first Sunday. Uh, and, and I heard, I was, I was teaching a lesson, and I heard the Spirit of God say, don't uh, 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 do the supper today. You know, because the people's heart ain't right. They got a lot of stuff that's happening. You know, I, and I think I was talking about forgiveness that day. And, and God said, tell them to go get the, the unforgiveness right. And then come back and receive the supper. Amen. Amen. Man, it got out in the city that, uh, <laughs> that, that we didn't take the Lord's Supper. The, 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 we had, and it was all set up and ready to go. Man, I got some calls. Sharp, are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. He said, well, we heard that you didn't take the supper. Yeah, I did not take the supper that day. Well, you know, you know, you know. I said, yeah, I know. I know it's a tradition to take it on the first Sunday. But the Bible says as often as I do it, if I do it on Monday, if I do it on Tuesday, if I do it on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's still as often as I do it. I said, but here's the thing. What you don't understand is God told me not to take it. God told me that. And look, look, look. And, and I say, that's why the Bible tells the pastor, you need to know the state of your flock. Yeah. Amen. And you better be listening to the Holy Spirit. Right. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so, man, I mean, I mean, when, when you obey God, people will look at you kind of funny yeah. because they not obeying God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You're going to do what? Amen. You're going to go where? You gonna give how much? Cause the Lord said, "The Lord." <laughs> and they been looking like, "But the Lord ain't never told me nothing." Yeah, He been talking to you, but you just haven't been listening. Amen. But if I want favor on my life, I gotta, I gotta obey God. Go to Job thirty-six. Job thirty-six. Job thirty-six. Yeah. Yeah, Job 36. Hallelujah. I must obey God. Job 36. Look at verse 11. Job 36, verse 11. Look what it says. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. But if they obey not, they shall, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. Wow. If I obey, I'll have the good life. If I don't obey, I'll end up dying. That's a choice we got to make. I mean, it's straightforward. Look. Obey and live in prosperity. Don't obey and die. Now, my obedience now must be out of love and respect for God. Not because he's making me do something. Amen. You know, I, I believe all of our parents, when we were growing up, made us go to church. I know my mama did. My mama told me if I didn't go to church as a gladiator, I couldn't go outside and play. And I knew... After church, I won't go shoot mar marbles with RC. So I know I need to go to church. And the days I try to shoot hooky, you know, you know, that was days you, you put the cover over your head and make yourself real hot so you get a fever. You, 
Then you go to your mom and say, Mom, I got a fever. She said, okay. All right. And then all of a sudden, the Lord healed you by the time they got home from church. I'm healed. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And she said, oh, no. Oh, no, you got to stay in the house. Well, that was constrained obedience. I, 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 there were times I didn't want to go to church. Mama made me go to church. Amen. I, I, I was made to go. Then there is partial obedience. There's sometimes that people will partly do what God said. I did part of it, God. Well, the part that you did, did not do, is still disobedience. Yeah. See, many people partly do what God, I did half of it. Yeah. And God said, well, that's not all of it. Say amen. Yeah. Then there is willful obedience. God, I, I, just, I just love you so much. I, I, I love, I love my father so much that if he tells me to do a thing, God, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it partially. And, and how, how many of you know there's some half-hearted Christians? They do stuff halfway, you know? What if God would do half with you? He going to halfway save you, halfway deliver you, halfway set you free. I mean, you got, you got a chain on this arm, but... The, the, the left arm and then the right arm, God set you free, but you're still in bondage. What if God would do us like that? So why are, are we going to partially obey God? Amen. But if I want the favor of God, I got to obey him. Somebody say obey again. Whew. And see, when I obey God, he must be the priority in my life, the most significant other in my life. That's how I obey God, because God, I made you the most significant other in my life. Nobody else come before you. So again, all I want to do is please you. God, I, I'm willing to obey you even though I don't know where you're taking me. What if, what if, what if uh, Abram would have told God, God, give me, the, give me the map first in Genesis chapter 12. When he tells him, look, I want you to get up, leave your father's house, go to a place that I'll tell you of. I'm not going to tell you right now. Just go. Take I-10 and just drive. God, well, where I'm going? I'll tell you. How many of us would take that type of step? You don't know where you're going. But all you know is that God told you to get up and go. I got to be willing to take bold steps of faith without full understanding. God, I don't know where you're taking me. I don't know what you're going to do, but you told me to leave and I'm going to do it. Wow. See, many people want to know the end result before they ever get there. Well, you don't need faith for that. You don't need faith for that. If you already know the end result, you know, as far as step by step by step by step, you don't need faith for that. And faith is the only thing that's going to please God. I, there are times where I say, God, just show me all of it. And God say, it wouldn't be faith for you. It's a daily walk. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a constancy that you live by faith. You got to live this thing, man. And when you obey God, you, you are living by faith. Because, you know, look, the Bible says that he orders our steps. But... It presupposes that I'm going to walk. <laughs> God's going to order them, but you got to walk it out. Yeah. And I tell you, every time you begin to obey God and walk by faith, boy, your, the, your mind's going to tell you, what are you doing? I mean, you're going to have a battle going on inside of you. That you're going to do what? You're going to live by faith. And guess what you have to do? You got to pull those arguments down. Every, everyone, every stronghold that rises up, you got to pull it down. Amen. Every challenge that the devil throws at you for living by faith, for obeying God, you got to pull it down. I mean, you got to do it. I mean, I, th th this is how you're going to get the favor on your life. Because I'm telling you, it's not going to be because the devil ain't going to mess with you. Because he going to mess with you. Yes, he is. 
then, then finally, if I'm going to obey God, watch this now. When the challenge comes, I must know I have the grace of God to handle that situation. Paul prayed three times. Father, remove this situation from me. Take it from me. I, I, I don't want to go through this. And God says, my grace is sufficient. My grace, my favor is sufficient. And Paul says, when I was weak, <laughs> then I knew I was strong, man. God, dog, I'm telling you, man. But I got to understand that if I'm going to obey God, I'm going to be put under pressure. Yes, you will be put under pressure. But God's grace or favor is sufficient for you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -mm. And when I do that, when I, when I obey God, guess what? Then I'll find myself living in the favor. Amen? Amen. But I got to stop tonight because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen.